The 2018 iPad 6th generation is currently the cheapest way to iPad at well under the $200 mark on the used market and is also the oldest of Apple's tablets to run the latest iPad OS 17. And so is this the iPad bargain of the year or is there more to the story? Let's find out starting with the design. And by the way, timestamps are in the description if you'd like to see something specific. So starting off with the design, well, it's all too familiar with the home button and bezels. In fact, it's actually the same body as the iPad 5th generation, which is based off the 9.7 inch iPad Pro from 2016 with a few things missing. It's pretty well form factored with its 9.7 inch display and weight of 478 grams. It's not as sleek as something newer or more premium, but it's also nowhere near hefty territory. Still easy to carry around in your hands or backpack, but also nothing really to write home about. On the front, again, we get our bezels and home button. Pretty chunky bezels in this day age, so the viewing experience won't be as immersive as an all-screen iPad or even something like the 10.5-inch iPad Pro with smaller bezels, but still not really a deal breaker, especially for someone who doesn't care about the small stuff. The home button packs Touch ID so you can unlock your iPad using your fingerprint, although it is only first-gen Touch ID so you do have to press it quite intentionally for a good second, but again a pretty trivial thing in the big picture. On the sides we are missing the smart connector so you're only limited to Bluetooth keyboards and not just one you can snap onto the side like on the following year's iPad 7th gen although these rounded edges have completely disappeared off Apple's latest iPads. Nowadays the sides are flat, so if you do prefer these rounded edges for their feel in the hand, you're in luck. Now at the bottom of the iPad 6 houses the lightning connector and speaker. No USB-C just yet, as this was only 2018, and the speaker is pretty mediocre, so you'll probably want to plug in your own headset with the increasingly rare headphone jack at the top. I don't know, this is a pretty boring iPad design all in all, nothing really special to say about it, but yeah, it's functional, somewhat sleek, and it gets the job done. Now moving back to the front of the iPad 6, we have our 9.7 inch LCD retina display. With a resolution of 2048 by 1536 and pixel density of 326 pixels per inch, it's sharp enough so that individual pixels are impossible to discern at a normal viewing distance, so for most people, this display is going to do just fine, in fact, probably really well. Colors are nice and vibrant, and with a peak brightness of 600 nits, you'll be able to see what you're doing even when you're outdoors in the sun. So yeah, for the average person who doesn't really read into tech specs that much or the nitty gritty non-essential stuff, it's a great display. However, it is missing a few things that would be nice to have. For example, it's not a laminated display, so there is a little air gap between the glass and the actual screen. So it doesn't really feel like you're touching the screen, but more so just above it. There's kind of a hollow feel to it, if that makes sense. Again, not super detrimental, but still worth pointing out. Also, it's only got a 60Hz refresh rate, unlike the buttery smooth 120Hz displays on the iPad Pros, so if you're coming from a high refresh rate display phone, it can be quite jarring to go back to 60. All in all though, you know, it's a good display, shows everything sharply and accurately and just works. Although, if you're a tech spec fanatic, it's not going to knock your socks off. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, this display is compatible with the first generation Apple Pencil, something that the previous iPad 5 did not have, so if you're into digital art or you're a student wanting to handwrite notes, you can do that with the Apple Pencil pretty much just like on the new $1000 iPad Pros. Albeit, you can only use the first generation pencil and not the second gen, so you'll have to very stylishly charge it through the lightning port. Yeah, this is pretty inconvenient, but this is definitely a positive of even having Apple Pencil support on a sub $200 tablet. Something else that's definitely a positive though is getting unlimited 5G data for just $15 a month with today's video partner, Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers top end speed coverage and data for literally as low as $15 a month. And get this, three months free if you sign up before December 30th using my link below. And plus, Ryan Reynolds owns the company, something I bet you can't flex about your current mobile plan. Hey there, it's Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile. Enticing, right? Because Mint doesn't have any retail stores, this cuts out all the costs for salespeople and therefore all of your overpriced mobile bills. With Mint Mobile, you can't notice a single bit of difference compared to mainstream service providers, whether you're playing heavy online games or simply browsing the web or scrolling social media. It's truly high quality service that will carry you through anything and everything. And because Mint supports eSIM, you can make the switch without leaving your bed, all while keeping the same number. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, they'll ship you a physical card for free. And so if that sounds pretty darn good, head to my link in the video description to access this incredible offer. For that, you're getting unlimited high quality 5G data with the US's largest mobile network, and again, three whole months free if you sign up using my link below before December 30th. You'll save a boatload of cash with no drawbacks, no caveats, and definitely no price hikes. And thank you so much to Mint Mobile for partnering with me for this video. 
And now let's take a look at the performance on the iPad 6. How has that held up after six years? Well, the iPad 6 sports the Apple A10 chipset and two gigabytes of RAM. Same specs as in the iPhone 7, and honestly, for everyday tasks like watching videos, browsing the web, reading the news, like games, there's not really any major glitches or slowdowns. And although it might take a second or two longer to open apps compared to more recent iPads, it is a pretty darn good user experience for a six-year-old tablet. Although heavy games like Pixel Gun 3D or Asphalt 9 are pretty much out of the question. As you can see here, Pixel Gun is basically unplayable. All in all though, for just light, everyday tasks, this is quite dependable performance. No, it's not anywhere near powerhouse territory, but it can still sail through the basics. Just stay away from heavy, power-intensive games and editing 4K footage, and you'll be right. Now in terms of the iPad 6's longevity, this is where it's all a bit up in the air at the moment. No one really knows for sure whether it will receive iPadOS 18 next year, or be stuck on iPadOS 17 forever. The iPhone 7, which has the same chipset and RAM as the iPad 6, was cut off from software support last year and I'm guessing the only reason the iPad 6 lived on was because it was only four years old in 2022. Modern day Apple wouldn't cut a device off that soon from release, although it'll be six years old in 2024, so there is quite a bit of evidence to suggest that iPadOS 17 will be its last update. If it does get cut off come September 2024, it'll no longer receive new software features or improvements that iPadOS 18 and beyond will provide. Apps will slowly become less compatible and more buggy with the older iPadOS version. Of course, it won't just immediately become an ancient relic after software support is dropped you should still have a pretty seamless experience for one to two years at least, but slowly but surely its functionality will decline overall as time goes on. And yeah, I mean, who knows, maybe Apple will go ahead with another year of software support. It's not entirely off the cards, but it is unlikely. All the evidence is suggesting that it will be cut off. So it's not really a great long-term solution to keep for years and years from now, but if you're just after a cheap, reliable iPad that'll work great for like one to two, even three years, this isn't really much of an issue. Now moving on to the battery life, well, it's nothing special, but it should still be fine for the vast majority majority of people. Of course, with a lot of the batteries in these things having time to wear out over the years, a lot of these iPad 6s are going to have shot batteries. But if the iPad hasn't been used that much or it's had a battery replacement, it'll last more than long enough for light to moderate use. And even if you do use your iPad a lot, there is still a pretty good chance it'll pull through provided the battery is in good condition. In the period that I was filming with this iPad, it literally just would not die. So if battery life is important to you, the iPad 6 will likely be on your side. And finally, I've left the cameras until last just because cameras are pretty irrelevant on tablets. No one really uses them because we have our phones, but nonetheless, the ones on here do the job for like FaceTiming calls and scanning documents, with 8 megapixels on the rear and 1.2 megapixels on the front. While both of these cameras are absolutely terrible if you compare them to smartphone cameras, they still do the job for what they were meant for. Again, scanning documents, video calling, etc., but I would never want to use these cameras for actually taking photos, especially that 1.2 megapixel selfie camera, which how did they get away with 1.2 megapixels in 2018? It's absolutely absolutely horrendous no matter what. As you can see, it's all green and blur. I mean, yeah, sure it works for FaceTiming, but it literally does the bare minimum and not one bit more. Basically, these cameras are meant more so as tools and not something you'd use for capturing the perfect photographic masterpiece. And so, with everything in mind, it's pretty clear that the iPad 6 for commonly well under $200 is darn good value for money in a lot of aspects. The performance is still going strong, the display looks really good, battery life is still pretty solid, and for just general iPad-y stuff like watching movies, browsing the web, scrolling social media, playing games and writing emails, the iPad 6 is pretty capable. The only drawbacks are that the battery life probably won't be in its prime anymore. I mean, sure it'll still be good, but probably not as good as it used to be. And plus, software support is likely to end in the next year, so again, if you're planning to keep it for years and years, it's not the most viable option, but again, you should still get solid trouble for use for another one to two years from now, even if software support is cut off next year. This really is a great option for anyone looking for a cheap, reliable, and well-performing iPad, great for maybe a grandparent, a kid's first tablet, or just something to browse the web and watch content on, or even if you want to get into digital art and you're on a tight budget. Again though, do try and find one with a battery that's in good condition, and you'll be good to go. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please make sure you drop me a like and subscribe to Text free for more reviews, insights, and the occasional unboxing. Thank you so much for watching. This is Tom with Textbrief, and I'll see you as always next time.